Welcome to the God Only Encouraging Message and Prayer Series. Messages from the heart of God to draw you confidently and boldly to the throne of grace that you may receive mercy for your failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. That appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when you need it as he promises in Hebrews 4.16. Today, your Heavenly Father wants you to know as a child of God, that he hears you and he answers your prayers. He wants you to come boldly to his throne of grace and make prayer your first response and not the last option. Did you come and speak to him about everything that's on your mind? Because God gives you the privilege to come into his presence and know that he's waiting for you and he can be interrupted by you as his child and he has time for you and he will listen to you and he will help you in all the affairs of life. So let's turn to what God says in his word. God wants you to seek him in prayer and to be dependent upon him. And a good example of is the prayer of Nehemiah in Nehemiah 1. God wants you to do this so that you can know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, who's living in you, God in you, working through you and helping you in all the affairs of life. God says through the Holy Spirit, teaching Nehemiah to pray. He comes to him, he says, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love. Did you hear that? Unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commandments. Listen to my prayers. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people. And then he says, I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned against you. We have sinned terribly by not obeying your commands and decrees and regulations that you gave to us through your servant Moses. Please remember us. Please remember what you told your servant Moses. If we are faithful to you, you'll be faithful to us. And he tells you that you will bring us back and you will help us. And you will have a place of honor for us is what he prayed. And then, of course, God blessed Nehemiah. God bless Nehemiah. He tells him, and he asks him at the end. He says, oh, Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayer of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me and put into his heart to be kind to me. And it was that very thing that happened for Nehemiah. And he was able to help his nation. But it was that very day, that prayer that very day, where he went as the king's cupbearer before the king and asked him certain things so that he could rebuild the wall in Jerusalem. Listen, I can tell you for spending many years on my knees before the Lord, and praying for you and your families and your generations after you. That each day, we need guidance and strength and provision and protection and the presence of the Lord with us and around us and between us and among us and working in and through us to be able to respond as God would have us to respond to every situation and circumstance in life. The older we get, the more we recognize our dependence on God to achieve his divine purposes in our lives and that God does have a divine purpose for your life that only he can fulfill in you as he has predetermined before you were ever born. Listen, just as he says in Ephesians 2.10, God promises that he created you for a purpose and a reason. He says, you were my workmanship, my own handiwork, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew of the Spirit of God, to do those good works which I predestinated. That means he planned beforehand for you. That means that he's got the paths directed for you to walk in. He says even in Proverbs 16, 9, that you can plan your ways and do all this planning, but it's he who directs your steps. 
It's he that's prepared the head of time, the path that you should walk in. And then he tells you that you will walk in them. And then he gives you a promise, living the good life that he's prepared and arranged and made ready for you to live. That's the blessing of God in Ephesians 2.10 for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Listen, God loves you and he wants you to know that he hears you, that he draws you to himself through Christ Jesus to exchange your wishes and ideas for his wishes and ideas. That's prayer because behind you, you have to remember every moment of your life, God has prepared. He knows and he's written down every day in his book, even before you were born. And he knows what the situations and circumstances that you'll need this day and every day. And he knows what he wants to accomplish in you and through you and for you. So he draws you to himself to pray those things that you need to so that you can see that when he gives you the answers, that it wasn't your prayer that brought God's answers, but it was your praying, seeking God that He wanted you to recognize that it was he that was doing it through you and for you and around you and not you yourself. God loves you, and he's your father, and he wants the absolute best for you. So the best way to follow God is to come into his presence, to seek his face and humble yourself before him in dependent prayer. That's prayer that recognizes that what God says about you that he knows every need that you have, even before you ask him, just as he says in Matthew 6, 8. And you recognize that your Father, which art in heaven, is the sovereign ruler of the universe. And just as he said and showed Nehemiah, and Nehemiah prayed, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and unfailing love and loving kindness and mercy for those who love him, And keep his commandments. When you come and humble yourself before the Lord and confess your dependence upon him and dismiss your own governance and your own self-reliance and your carnal ego, you can rest assured that God being a partner in your labor and effectively work in you, giving you the power and desire both to will and to do his good pleasure and to love as he loves and forgive as he forgives and to do as he does because he's effectively at work in you, giving you the power and desire to do it, that God will be your helper. It's God that's leading you to pray and come to him so he can empower you and strengthen you in your weaknesses to clothe you with his very power, the very power of Christ, so that you can say, as Paul said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And we just thank you for it, Father God. For it's God's sovereign rule of the universe. It's God that was working all things together, and feeding him into his plan for good. And you are a member of his own household, a child of God. He's working in and working through to accomplish his good purposes and his tents and his plan. But it's for those who love God and are called according to his design and his purpose. You have to love God, and you know that God loves you. And when you do, you will acknowledge, confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is Lord and nothing is impossible. And in your heart, you'll believe there's nothing impossible. And you will trust and rely and depend on God who raised Jesus from the dead to do all things that you need to get accomplished and that he needs to accomplish through you because you trust in him. And then you being a child of God, you get the privilege of coming boldly to the throne of grace because he knows you and you know him and you can come fully expecting him to give you mercy for your failure and to give you his help, his well-timed help coming just when you need it in every situation and circumstance of life because he loves you and because you love him. Listen, God's your father being the sovereign ruler of the universe, to whom nothing is impossible or too difficult or too wondrous. For him, he loves to do those things for you that you can't do for yourself. He knows that you're in a spiritual realm and there's spiritual wickedness and 
enemies around you. And he gives you his divine protection, his divine strength, and his divine might, and his divine angels to watch over you. God keeps you, and he watches over you. And he doesn't look to you as if you had faults. No, he's your loving friend. He's your most loving friend, and he's always with you. So you can let your character and your moral disposition be free from the love of money, including greed and lust and craving for earthly possessions. And you can be satisfied with what your present situation and circumstance is, knowing that your Father, which art in heaven, provides all your needs and that he does it abundantly above what you can even think, hope, ask, or imagine. So you trust in him. For you know that God himself has said, I am your provider. I am the Lord your God who takes care of you. I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not in any way leave you without help or forsake you, or let you down, relax my hold on you. So you can take comfort and be encouraged and confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm in this day. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me if God is on my side? For greater is he that's in me than he is in the world, as you proclaim. And that's who you are in Christ Jesus. When you know that you're the child of God. He wants to be in every aspect of your life, and he's your father who knows everything in your life, then you will seek him and respect his holiness. You'll want to do those things that please him. You'll want to do those things that he tells you to do in every situation and circumstance because he's given you the power and desire to do it. Then you know you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you because you're fully dependent upon God who's doing his works in you and through you and helping you to do those things he wants you to do. And you know that he forgives you of your sins. And you ask him to forgive you your sins. You say, Father, forgive me of my sins, my trespasses, my inequities. And I thank you, Father God, for I thank you for giving me the power and desire both to will and to do your good pleasure and to forgive as you forgive and to love as you love and to have joy as you have joy and have peace as you have joy, peace because you are my love and my joy and my peace. You are those fruits that you exhibit through me and those gifts that you exhibit through me. And he fills you with all the fullness of God. You are complete in Christ Jesus and all the fullness of God. The richest measure of his divine presence is fully active and alive in you because you're born of the Spirit of God and the Spirit of God himself lives in you. Christ himself lives in you. God is always with you and he is watching over you and helping you and giving you his divine instruction and his divine persuasion to help you in every area of life. God wants you to know that you can stand tall in his presence because he draws you to himself and you have a personal relationship with him, that you have a relationship of dependence upon your father, God, and he is your personal father and you are his child. And because you're his child, he will watch over and guide you and protect you. He will show you the best paths to take and he will abundantly supply you with everything that you need out of his riches and glory in the heavenly places. That means you have the wisdom, you have the understanding, you have the knowledge, and you have the understanding that you need so that you can be a blessing not only to yourself, but a blessing to others through Christ working through you and helping you and to help others to become the best that they can be by depending on God because God never fails. And his unfailing love is always with you. So trust in God and leave the results to him and know that God is praying and pleading for you. Jesus himself is pleading. The Holy Spirit is pleading on your behalf and intercessing on your behalf. So you know it's not just you praying, but God himself through the Son and through the Spirit are praying on your behalf in God's perfect will. Because you love him, you depend on him, and you trust in Christ Jesus. So you know God hears you, 
And God hears your heart, not your words. He knows what your heart's desire is, even when your words don't seem to put it out there. So you can trust that just in silence, God hears you. And by kneeling, you're honoring him and you're glorifying him on your knees before the Father who loves you and gave himself for you through his son, Jesus Christ, to bring you back to himself. And he loves you for eternity. So trust in him, depend on him, rely on him, and he will show himself faithful always for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.